Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to try and complete our moon mission. Once again, let's hope that we have made constructive changes. We added those little lander legs, for instance, and that it will all work out. Hmm, actually right-clicking on it. Wheel stress 0.0. .0. Uh, well, that's not tweakable, so that's just... Why is it wheel stress? Anyway, let's just proceed, shall we? So, I want to make sure that we're not going to be using mod propellant... Not mod propellant, sorry, I was playing stock earlier. Um, using any of the hypergolics from here. Yeah, they all seem to be locked. Alright. Okay, it looks like just the hydrogen engines are on. Good, the RL-10s are ready and fuel is settled so we should get started once it uh, gets to the maneuver node. Actually the RCS thrusters will have trouble pointing directly at the maneuver node. We have to rely on the gimbling on the RL-10 so let's go. And we are on our way. plotted course is as follows. It's sort of a free return trajectory, but it's a high earth periapsis on this side, so we would have to make adjustments in order to make it a real return into Earth's atmosphere, but at least it's going the right way. Uh, moon periapsis is 77 kilometers. Uh, we have a big problem. Uh, engine shutdown, engine shutdown. What? I was just talking away, expecting the burn to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Mm, control, uh, no, uh, yeah, disable cross -feed. Control from here. Okay, well, on the right side we have enough delta V. On the downside we might have, uh, I mean, because we were not apparently pointed in the right direction, we might be, uh, might have changed our orbit substantially from what's plotted here. I'm going to opt to, well, I'm thinking about whether I should wait in orbit. This does have RCS still. Uh, it seems to want to roll persistently. Hold on. Perhaps, uh, or kill rotation would be good. This is distressing. Yeah, I, I'm going to say that we have to replot here. I don't know how bad boil-off will be, but obviously this is not good. Control from here, right? Okay, we're all in agreement that that's where we're controlling from. But when did this roll start and why did it start? All the engines read green, I mean, or, you know, no problems. Did this test flight detect anything? No, they're all okay. So there shouldn't be any residual spin of any kind. Everything is really symmetrical around the whole thing. Okay, I think we're going to go for a trajectory that isn't so much of a free return trajectory. Um, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Uh, we appear to have stopped rolling. I'm going to have it point at the node now. Even though we're an hour and 38 minutes. No, I mean, we, we do have persistent rotation, so that's sort of pointless, isn't it? Okay. Well, let's wait a while. We should still have enough delta V even after the boil off. And this time we'll let RCS settle it down first before igniting the engines. I don't know why that would make a difference, but... So it's gonna wiggle around a bit first. Okay, well, we seem to be settled, but we're running out of RCS, so I'm going to turn it off temporarily. I guess it's not that sensitive a uh, transfer. Maybe we should go now. I want to see what's happening here. Okay. Is it going to start some weird roll and tumble all over the place? It seems to be right in line right now. I'm not going to touch anything. I don't know what happened before. Uh, we've lost one of the RL-10s. 
it looks like the gimbling on the RL10s can hold everything on. So that's good. I guess we could shut down the opposite engine as well. It would be more efficient to do so. And actually we started the burn early, so that might work out for us. Well, we can't throttle the engines, but I like the idea of shutting them down to uh, make sure that we're not going so fast that I can't fine-tune our approach to the moon. As we get close to the end of the burn, it's going to be tough to make sure we shut down the engines on time, and having just two on would help out with that. Then again, we might be pushing those two close to the limit of their rated burn time. I wouldn't want it to go awry right when we're trying to make our lunar approach finalized. No, I suppose we're not really accelerating that fast. Better to have all four on just in case one goes out right at the end. Okay, here we go. Oh. I think we've just lost an engine. Uh, right. Uh, uh, oh, it's partial thrust, actually. Um, okay, we'll just leave it be. I've got other things to do right now. I'm going to take Smart ASS off and put SAS on so it doesn't wander with the maneuver node. Um, okay, we've had other issues. Oh, uh, that's not good. Okay, uh, so let's shut down. Shut down. Let's take stock of what engines we can actually use properly. Uh, all right, uh, we need RCS to turn us to no. To, well, uh, hold on. We'll 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 cycle around and then eventually get close to the node. Oh, this is tough. I should use locked view maybe. Uh, that one is dead. This one's dead. Well, that's fun. Do we have a working pair? That one's good. That one's dead. That one's good. All of our good engines are on the same side. This one, this one, and this one are all dead zero ignitions remaining. This one, this one, and this one are the good ones. Uh, that being the case, I think we have to ditch this stage and complete the burn with our hypergolics. Though so that tank still looks mighty low to me. I really need to transfer the hydrogen. Let's see. Um, enable crossfeed again. Let me disable and enable crossfeed again. Um, in. Okay, now it's transferring. Maybe it was just when the engines are on. Uh, let me turn this off. Okay, well, let's let go of it. Undock. And activating this side. Okay, uh, hold on. Don't do anything just yet. Mm, back off. I don't know what it's trying to turn for. Here, let me give you something to turn to. Okay, I'm going to manually activate these engines. And we're going to hit that nice and close. Let's say 80 kilometers. Okay, well, okay, 77.8 kilometers. All right, we are on our way. We are recharging. Okay, approaching the moon's sphere of influence. Seems like it's going to be pretty tough to have enough fuel to bring them back, but we'll see. We are making orbit around the moon. Okay, and getting close there. Shut down. Night 2 by 79. Okay, that seems like a decent orbit and everything. 
Uh, left in this stage is 262 meters per second. Now, that's obviously not going to be enough to get back home, but that's when we have this descent stage and the fuel in the ascent stage. Uh, when we come back and let's say we only attached a capsule to this, maybe we even ditched the, de uh, the ascent stage, then hopefully it'll be enough, but I don't know. We do have other assets uh, around. We could transfer to the moon with them. But that's a uh, risky business. Let's hope that it's going to be enough. Okay, on that note, uh, we want to decouple this thing. Are we ready? Let me uh, take RCS off so it doesn't go all over the place. Okay, very good. And now that decoupler is sticking with us, but it is in line with the engines, so it should be stable, maybe. Uh, gear down. Right, this really gives us a lot of confidence, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's better than last time, what can you say? All right. Electric charge is diminishing. How's this side? Um... This side says no connection and says no electric charge. I didn't put batteries on this side? Oh, fudge. We're doomed. Really? Uh, how did I forget that? How was it last time? I mean, we definitely have enough to land and take off again. But we didn't, don't have enough to come home. Unless we dock with something else like that. They don't have a whole lot of electric charge to work with. That's gonna run out eventually. And I should have transferred the hydrogen oxygen from that side into this before decoupling. Where's the sun? Well, the panels are sort of facing the sun. Yeah, they're getting direct sunlight, so this is our best recharge rate. Um, with one fuel cell on, with both fuel cells on, it'll recharge, but... Okay, hold on. We need to take a look at what else we have hanging around. Okay, well, we have a number of fuel depots around Earth right now. This one, the solar panels seem to have uh, done something weird. Let me retract them and extend them again. Because they went all vertical on me. It's not the way you're supposed to be, solar panels. Please don't break on me. But this is a 12 ton tank. It's probably not the best thing. It's just got a single asterisk engine on it. But let's just not take any chances, shall we? We should send everything over to the moon and then decide there, maybe? Well, if we send this to the moon, that's 3,100 meters per second gone, and then it's gonna have to make orbit. So that's 800 meters per second, and a little bit more for rendezvous, and then we have 1,700 left, but that's without carrying anything on top of it. Having a payload, it probably isn't enough to really boost something back home. Uh, let's leave this here for now. We probably have a heavier one than this. This was launched on the Radon rocket, if you remember that. So, yeah, let's see. It's a shame that we didn't have, you know, all those fuel depots that we launched on all those different versions of the Nico. All of them failed. Well, I think there's one that didn't fail, so hopefully that one is still around and might be able to help us. Let me take a look at the tracking station. Okay, well, this is a bit more like it. It's uh, more like 20 tons. It's got 6,000 to start off with. It's going to take forever to do the burns, though. That sucks. Um, yeah, I mean, we're probably talking about a 20-minute burn to to the moon. Uh, might as well boost it up a little bit. Let's see. I'll plot for the moon, but we're probably going to have to do it on two different rounds, because it's going to take too long anyway. Uh, and anything heavier is going to... Well, there might be one stage left. Well, anyway, let's get this started off with. Um, at least it'll give us some hope here. Uh, it's in line with the moon, so we can transfer without an off-plane transfer. That's good, because that means we'll get there quicker. Oh, I just lost connection. 
Uh, it has antennae. I can still plot the maneuver. Of course, uh, if we don't do an efficient transfer, the faster we get there, the more we'll have to slow down. So we still want uh, an efficient transfer so that we can slow down properly. And we're going prograde around the moon, so we don't want to mess around with that. We want to match what the other vehicle is doing, though it's tough to match the inclination here. So that's a tricky business. Let's see. We might have to do some mid-course adjustments to really get this right. Right now, that's where our target is. Though, technically, once it uh, gets back to orbit, it can rendezvous with anything, right? I mean, if we do do the landing, it can get back up and match anything. Huh. Yeah, I think uh, we should make that the plan. doesn't have to this doesn't have to match inclinations with the existing mission but we would like something roughly equatorial not like this I'm gonna leave this be for now let me see if there's another thing that we can use but at least we've got a maneuver plotted here we've got 21 minutes for this and of course we're gonna come around again and do half of the burn afterwards Okay, well, here we are with one of our old uh, stages, you know, with the Advanced Gemini Lander engines. And it has... it's got its fuel locked right now. It has 5,831. So not as much as the other one, but it'll take much less time to actually use it. So we'll take 3,000 to get to the moon, 800 to make orbit, and I'll have 2,000 left over. And then we have to attach, uh, which will be less once we attach something else to it. But it's got power, so I guess what happened was I must have, when I switched out the advanced Gemini lander engines for the Asterisk engines on this stage, on the other model that's currently around the moon, I must have emptied this tank because the um, fuel ratio wouldn't have been right, and then filled it up again, but forgot to add the electric charge which this, this has. It is recharging, even though it has very little charge. Actually, it'll be better off if we transfer it quickly. Let's see what we can plot. I'll be back with you once I get something done. Okay, we have a plot for the moon. Um, just checking whether the RCS thrusters look properly configured. Let me... Yep, okay, they are. Uh, so, we have our plot for the moon, and it's in an hour and 22 minutes. So, we'll do the other one first. And then we'll come back to this, through this one, and then we're going to have to finish off with the other one again because it's going to take two burns. And then we'll have two different uh, fuel tanks, if you will, that can help our mission out. So we'll be able to, I think we should be able to land at the moon. Um, the, sol the electric charge situation is more worrisome, I think. And I don't know, I mean, this only has 0.2 surplus electric charge to supply. The other one probably has just about the same, maybe less. Okay, well, anyway, let me turn to the 20-ton depot and get its transfer underway. Okay, here we go for the first burn. Ignition. And... I'm going to go and read a book now because up oh, it's a little bit stuck all right yeah this is gonna take a while all right I'll be back with you once this gets uh, somewhat closer to the moon okay ladies and gentlemen so I've completed the translunar injections for both of the tankers if you will the fuel depots and I've decided to put this one uh, this uh, part of the one of the failed Kelly launches into a quick trajectory, which means it's going to have a moon encounter in two days and 15 hours and reach moon periapsis in three days and nine hours. That's the fastest that I could do reasonably without it costing a lot to get into orbit around the moon. It still costs a bit more than it should, so we're gonna have to watch out for that. And it's coming in prograde so that we're matching, well, roughly matching the, the lander. But then we've got the Nico 621, and you can see very visually that it's coming in later. Uh, here, three days, 19 hours, moon encounter. So actually, it encounters the moon. Oops. Let me find... Uh, there, there. Um, it encounters the moon 10 hours after this one would get into 
lunar orbit. So that's interesting because what that means is we will conduct the landing after this one gets into lunar orbit and we can make sure that we have this one there at least. And then we'll make the landing and then try and get back up. And then if there's any problems, we have the, so uh, the time is three days, nine hours, let's say three days in three days and 10 hours, we're going to start the landing. And then let's say we get back up in three days and 11 hours, something like that. Well, this one will still be on its way. It won't even have encountered the moon yet. And then in three days and 19 hours, we can use it to rescue whatever <laughs> we need to rescue if it so happens that things go wrong. Now, for instance, if it turns out that this one doesn't have enough fuel, we could possibly rendezvous this one with both parts and then use this one to refuel this one <laughs> and then save everything. That's the hope at least. There's also a possibility that this one will not be able to make orbit because of a lack of communication for some reason or something else weird happens. So we have to watch out for that. But so the next step is we're not going to do anything with the lander right now. We're just going to get this over to the moon, get it into orbit, and then decide what to do with the lander. All right, we now have this particular rescue stage in lunar SOI, and we are going to bring it into orbit. Uh, there is a question of whether I really want to approach like this, but I don't want to spend too much fuel making adjustments here. Uh, by my calculations, we should have enough. Uh, so that we can we can get it back home, get the Kelly 2 back home. Let's see how much it would cost to uh, flatten this out a little bit more uh, to make it easier for rendezvous between it and the Kelly 2 from the ground, right? Uh, so the Kelly 2 will land and then rendezvous from the ground. Um, I guess if we can get it around 30 meters per second I won't mind so much so for the Kelly 2 we'll try and land it maybe we'll land it here where the two orbits intersect that might be a good start to things um, if we pull this a little bit lower we could get that a little bit more into the daylight area there is the electric charge situation, and actually I don't know, uh, I haven't visited the Kekeli 2 in a little bit, so the, it might not be entirely legit how we've done the, handled the whole electric charge situation, um, or the boil off of the hydrogen, because I've been focused on these vessels, and that should have happened, but might not have happened, you know, electric, electric charge drain and the hydrogen depletion. But let's let's forget about that for now. We've got enough trouble on our hands without worrying about how legit this may or may not have been. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I still don't know if I can get them back or not. So let's do one thing at a time. I mean, there's also the fact that this doesn't have the fuel cell fuel tanks that the advanced version of this stage eventually had. We added those on. So, yeah, we don't have much fuel cell fuel on the Kelly 2. Okay, uh, let's make this adjustment. Uh, hold on, it's not really holding. SAS. Okay, right now. And making orbit with this little. Okay. Uh, 98 by 57. A little bit tighter than I was expecting, but we'll call that okay. And the vessel mass is about where I calculated it to be. In other words, uh, in order to figure out how much delta V I'd have with the Kelly 2 attached, I need to know what the vessel mass would be after the orbital burn and all. So yeah, it seems to be as expected, so that's good. All right. Well, now let's turn to the Kelly 2 and try and land, which is a horrible, horrible thing all on its own. So, and then uh, we'll land here, and then we'll try and get back, or close to it, we'll see where all the orbits are at after we go around to the other side. And then we will try and rendezvous with this probe. Okay, here we go. 
Oh, wow, it's uh, well it adjusted to food, water, and oxygen and everything. We have very little food left. Um, three days of food remaining. Four days of oxygen, but that's not taking into account the scrubber. Twelve days of water, because the fuel cell. And this retro can be done just as an RCS burn. Actually, I take it back. That's really annoying, so let's activate the engines. I don't know if that's safe or not, because it's all a question of the ground level. What the altitude of the surface is. Could be a little bit tight. Let's go to at least 20 kilometers on the periapsis. That might make for a long descent, but... So we're trying to land right around here-ish. Let's get uh, surface. In oh, we have uh, yeah, we have rendezvous up. Let's get surface info up. We're really, really high. One of my typical landings, um, coming in totally the wrong way. Okay, descending fairly quickly here. Still sort of looking good. Don't know how long it is until that, uh, well, we'll call it uh, impact point right now. We would like the horizontal velocity to be as little as possible to avoid tipping over. That could be important. And I'm actually gonna, oh, okay, using RCS to do that is not helpful. It claims a certain suicide burn count down there. Do I believe it? I don't know. This is still really tall. Yeah, it was lying to me about the suicide burn countdown. Engines are either on or off. I'm using a lot more fuel this time than last time. This is a bad camera angle. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no! Oh fudge. Right. The landing strut just went poof, was all it did. Well. Heck. <laughs> we're in the same sort of situation. I suppose we're going to try and... S I should have really action grouped these engines separately so that we could do this again. Um, well. Uh, EVA Valentina. I don't think we're going to be able to count this as a successful moon landing ahead of July 29th. Uh, not 29th, uh, 20th, 1969. Oh, she's just chattering away. Okay, uh, take surface sample, keep, EVA report, uh, keep. And we can't plant a flag. Well, we definitely can't count it because we never unlocked planting flags. 
kept forgetting that. Um, crew hatch. Okay, well, at least getting her back in wasn't too hard. Okay. Hmm. This is really bad. I need to have five before doing this. Oh, uh, because we're tilted down, I think the fuel is... Well, we're not moving anyway. Maybe we have to pump this fuel down. Okay. Well, that's sort of a rockety position right there. Maybe. Maybe we can try all our engines. I mean, we're sort of pointed up, right? We still have our target. Okay. Go. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Alright, well, uh, just the two engines then. Okay, turn off these two. Oh, uh, they were already off. Okay. Alright. Here we go again. Uh, oh, that's not good. Yeah, that was wrong. Uh, hmm. Maybe we should keep... Uh, maybe we should keep the fuel up top? Because it spun too quickly for me. And these engines don't throttle. The problem is if we don't pump the fuel down, we can't settle the fuel down for these engines because the fuel is getting pulled by gravity a little bit to this side and so it can't get into the pipes. So the tubes, no, um, so we do have to do that, but maybe just until there, uh, stop, stop might provide us with a little bit better balance and I have to remember to like push in an interesting direction in order to get this right okay oh fudge uh, do we have enough of a turn? no ah uh, it's not Yeah, I don't think I'm thinking about this right. Okay, well, this time what I need to do is be ready to activate this engine, I think. Okay. Ignition. Activate. Oh, no, no! Uh, um, okay, but I need to get the other engine. Oh boy. Um, oh, no, oh fudge, oh fudge. <sighs> How did I manage to do it in so few tries last time? Okay, well, he here I go. Uh, okay, we should have all four of them now. Ah, uh, that's enough time. Okay, so now I pump all the fuel back up again. Uh, and, and, and we need our target. Well, we're roughly going easterly. Go this way. Uh, well, up though. Up. Okay, stage. Stage and... Oh, fudge. Is that staging right? 
Um, I hope so. Um, where is the target marker now? There it is. Ooh! We're pretty close to the ground, huh? Well, we're really jetting now. That one's broken. Okay, extend. Well, our uh, electric charge situation is even worse than before. So, in the future, I think probably even in the next episode, I will debut a horizontal landing apparatus rather than this sort of tower version of things. I think that'd be a good idea. I think I'm sick of really tall landing craft. We didn't really time this very well. The target is way off. So I'm gonna try and keep it low, I think. Uh, what's that? Wait! Whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on here? Where, where are we? We're right around here. There are city textures! Guys, there's city textures on the moon. Uh oh. Um, uh, I think NASA will have to cut this out of the video. <laughs> uh, conspiracy theories, um, go ahead, go for it. Um, I'm not going. Wow. Um, hmm, hmm. RSS visual enhancements, I think. Uh, I think you've done something here, but that'd be the uh, that'd only be the logical thing to say. Uh, okay, anyway, I've got serious business to deal with. I'm in tears. I swear. Um, there are a lot of city textures on the moon right now, and they're constantly shifting. Yeah, I think I got something messed up here. I don't think this is like how RSS visual enhancements is. I'm sure, I'm sure there's something wrong with my own setup rather than the mod itself. It's usually how it happens. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, well, we can go a little bit higher than that for safety's sake, but we're in a very tight orbit around the moon, and it looks like we'll catch up to it. And it's got to take like 10 orbits, probably a day. Okay, I don't think I'm... Go oh, and I've left the relative inclination a little bit harsh. Should have been paying more attention to that, but I was focused on the city textures popping in and out. Let me go to the space station... Not space station... <laughs> The tracking station, and and I'll time warp there, because I don't know if the electric charge will hold out for a day. Honestly, we will see. I mean, I could turn on the other fuel cell, I suppose. I mean, it's not like I didn't balance this properly. You can see it's actually, even with the one solar panel broken, it's actually per per perfectly balanced. If I run both fuel cells, for some reason it's not showing hydrogen and oxygen drain while running the fuel cells. Not too sure what to think about that. Did we have some locked hydrogen and oxygen, by the way? No. Well, anyway, I'm sure it's using it. Anyway, balanced electric charge, there we go. I'll still time warp at the tracking station because it's got time warp restrictions and all.